Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be creating a rotating item shop like we see in Fortnite or some other games that you might see on Roblox. Basically the concept is that at a specific time every day the item shop will re-rotate to a random set of items. So quickly already I've created some preliminary things. I've taken some tools that we're going to be using as our items in the item shop. Uh, there's this shop items table, which I'll fill out later, but I've defined basically the shell of what it's going to be. Name, a tool name uh, to reference in storage, and an image to show in the shop. And I've set up a quick module loader structure here, where the server just loads these modules. And this client loads uh, this root GUI. And in my previous video, I talked about different module script forms, and this is the functional form. So basically, I'm writing a function for some parts of the interface. So first of all, I'm going to start by creating some interface for the shop, and then we'll talk right after that. Okay, so I've created my UI here just using simple Roblox elements, no images or anything. And right here we have the item cell for what's going to be represented in our shop. And we have this timer label here, which is the timer until the item shop resets. And something I realized that I've just forgotten to add is probably just a button to open the shop. So let me add that real quick. Okay, so there we go. I have all my UI ready. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make it so that when we click this button or click this button, it pulls up and closes the shop. Okay, so I just quickly whipped that up and if we play, we should be able to toggle the view of the item shop and close it. Nice. Let's continue. All right, so the next thing I want to do is fill out this shop items table with all the items in our shop. And I'm just going to fill it out with the names, IDs of these tools, and then the image, which is the tool texture ID over here, which is the same one that'll pop up in the toolbar when we have the item in our inventory. Okay, cool. Now we got our item data filled out. I think the next thing I want to do is reference that item data and then randomly select two items to fill out our item shop here. So this should print two items to our console, but right now it's just purely random. There's uh, no connection between the time that it is and what items are in the shop. So I think before I write the random function, I just want to write out um, displaying these items in the shop just so I can have that done. And I'm going to put this item cell actually as a template in our assets folder here on replicated storage so we can make clones of it later.
So there we go. We should see that we have two items in the shop, uh, pizza and the classic sword here. And that's just our simple item shop so far. Now we got to add the feature that it rotates uh, at every interval that we want to set. So just quickly looking over the code that I've written here, using the name, tool name, and image that we have defined in our shop item data, um, in our generate shop function, we create as many items as we want in the shop. And I'm only creating two right now just to show that we are getting random items in the shop. Uh, you can make this as big as you want. And we select a random item, get the item info, create a new cell in the shop, and then set the parent to the content. And something I realized I need to do is... Okay, so I quickly wrote a helper function here, which clears all the children, which is a certain class name. So it'll just loop through an instance, and if it's a certain class, it'll destroy it. And this is helpful because we can clear the frames from our shop frame whenever we regenerate the items in the shop. Okay, so I've quickly copied over this convert to hours, minutes, seconds function here. Um, I had this pre-written in a different game, and if you want to pause and copy it down now, you can. This is really useful for when we want to set that shop timer. But the next thing we're going to do is we're going to write a function to get the current shop index. And I'll talk about what this means in a minute. Okay, so here's our simple function to get the shop index. And the shop index is this number which represents every interval of shop cooldown time. So the modulus operator will divide now and return the remainder after um, this division. So right now we're dividing now, which is our OS time in uh, UTC time. So that's consistent across all uh, platforms. So we take this now time and we divide it by the cooldown time, which I've set to 30 seconds. And then any remainder gets subtracted off. So we should get index to be in increments of 30. The next function I'm going to write is a function to get the remaining seconds after the shop index. Okay, so this function gets the current shop index and then adds our interval here so this will be the next time that the shop resets and then we get the current time and then the difference is just the next shop reset um, subtracted from the current time and we return this difference so now using these functions we can go down here and we can write our function to um, represent the shop as the timer so now using these three functions, we can go down here and write our shop runner function, which I'll discuss after I write it. Okay, so I went a little bit ahead of myself here and I added in the generate shop function to our shop runner here. But basically what happens is we create this loop where we get the current index. And if this index is equal to the, this should be not equal. If it's not equal to the last index, then we generate the shop and then replace that variable with the current index. And then no matter what, we update this timer and we convert the time of the remaining time left until the next shop update. So if we've written it correctly, we should see that, yep, three, two, one, and once it stops, we should get a brand new shop. And then every 30 seconds here, we should get a brand new shop. But you might notice that if we set this to a longer amount of time, say 24,000 or something, something egregiously long, that flashlight and classic sword is what we have now and the expected behavior is that when we rejoin we should get the same items in the shop but we don't and you might be thinking that you have to do something complex where you have to write like one server is in charge of declaring the shop and all this stuff nope it's actually pretty simple right now if you notice the way we've programmed this is that we have this index that we get every interval 
and this index changes every time the shop changes, which is after this desired interval. So what we can do is if we pass this index into our generate shop function here, we can create a new random. And random is a class that you can use to generate random numbers, which is different from math.random, so this won't affect other random parts of your game. And so we instantiate this random with the index as the seed. And then we just replace this random with rng next integer. And we should see that when we load in, we get two items in our item shop. And since our index hasn't changed because the shop updates in the next four hours, if we play again, we should get the exact same items in our item shop. And you'll notice that we can change our interval here. And it's going to be hard to start and stop this in under 30 seconds, but we'll see what the new items are. Leave, rejoin, and then see what they are again. Leave, so we got Sword and Bloxy Cola. We rejoin. We should have Sword and Bloxy Cola if we made it in time. Oh, we did. And so there we go. Our rotating item shop now rotates. So let's write the back end to make sure that we're getting the right items. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna to wanna to write is the back end, which handles buying the items and making sure that the items we've purchased are actually in the shop. So I'm gonna create a folder here for all our remotes, and we're just gonna call it remote. Okay, so there we go. I've added on the client that when we click the button, it should fire this purchase item to the server. So let's start writing the server side. Okay, so I've quickly written up the code for the server side here, but I've made some small changes on the client in the meantime as well. So I passed in the index when we create a new item cell because I want the client to fire the shop index that the client has to the server so we can make sure that it's the same one. So what the server does is when we receive this, we will get the current shop index, which is the exact same method as the client, the next method I use is the get possible shop items function, which does the same thing as the client of getting the random items. So it should perform, since we use the same seed of the same index, we should get the same items. And this is just verifying that the item that the player wants to purchase is a possible item to collect. And then we create this uh, dictionary here where the possible items have a value of true. And so if possible items and our tool name should have a value of true, then we just clone the tool into the player's backpack. And this is just a simple one-liner. We should be able to get a classic sword and a Bloxy Cola. Uh, we can wait for the game to reload the next shop. Okay, so here we go. We got three seconds left. Hopefully we can get some new items. And boom, pizza's in the shop, and we can get the classic sword again. There we go. Our item shop rotates. We get new items. Okay, so now we see we have 22 hours until the next item shop, and we can get these two items. And if we leave and rejoin, no matter how many times we do it, we should get the same items in the item shop, which we can buy again. So on top of this, if you want to add more features, you could add, say, that items cost a currency, and so it'll remove currency from your account. Maybe you can't buy items again if you've already bought them. Uh, perhaps you want to add more items to your item shop. Uh, that's pretty simple. Or if you want to add different kinds of items, there's a lot of different ways to expand this. So hey guys, uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. Uh, comment down below if you have any questions or video suggestions. Thanks guys, have a good day.